heritage. So the heritage that we are talking about is why why I call it heritage because it has been used for a long time, thousands of years. Okay, people has been using the sky thousands of years because that time you imagine that time there's no development there's no light pollution so you all you can see at night are the stars and you can see all you know you what you can see is not like now like right now you can see buildings people's house and then you can see parks with a lot of lights and you no know, stadiums so those days where there are no development no development in like pollution or no high rise buildings, so they all can see sky with lots of stars at night. Okay, and they can see a lot of celestial phenomena like uh, the solar eclipse, the lunar eclipse, or the uh, supernova with their own eyes. So, what do they do? Okay, so they use the sky, they use it. To tell stories, to for to look uh, to look uh, directions, uh, you know, west, north, north, south, east, west, to tell time, to uh, to uh, you know for for crop crops, you know, uh, to grow plants, uh, for example, rice paddy, to for for corns, uh, for wheat, uh, so. So they use the sky because there are no GPS. There, there are no no such thing as smartphone. There's no such thing as um, you have like all the technologies right now. So you have GPS. So and now you have movie. You can go to cinema. You can download in Netflix. So they are, so they use the celestial. They use the night sky to to have. Yeah, these are the heritage that we need to know the dark sky so if we do not know the heritage that we have been passing down is stop here you know it will die okay same as the dark sky if we don't hit dark sky our heritage will die all right so first of all I, I, I would like to go on for the folklore i mean the stories okay the stories the local stories so i have a book called stories in the stars okay it is from Susanna Hislop. I love the, the story. So she compiled all the stories of the Greek, okay, the Greek myth, we call it. So one of the story I would like to share is from uh, is the constellation of Cassiopeia. She's a queen. Okay, Cassiopeia is a queen. You can see if you're in Bangladesh, if you're in Malaysia, if you're up, uh, above uh, zero degree latitude, you can see. You can see uh, Cassiopeia at, in the north, okay, in the north sky. So Cassiopeia is a constellation. So here goes the story. There once was an Ethiopian queen who was grossly concerned with her mean. My beauty, she swaggered, is so far from haggard. It exceeds any sea nymph I've seen. This is so angered to see God Poseidon. He struck the dark waves with his trident. Thus emerged from the deep a sea beast who wreaked havoc on the whole Ethiop island. So this is two paragraph uh, among six paragraph. Okay, they have they have like six paragraphs. So this is a, a story that the ancient people make from the constellation. So this is one of the story that they make. So and also you can you can see here is in you can see here that it's from Ethiopia because you can see the name of the country Ethiopia, and it also, you can also see the name of uh, the Greek god myth, which is Poseidon. Okay, and you can see you know there's a story uh, that connects Cassiopeia and also the other constellations, where the sea beast here is the other constellation. And here, Ethiopia queen, the Ethiopian queen is you know uh, you can see the, the the you can see on the right there is the here's the star, one two three four five. So I like to call it the W or the M. So you can see the M there. Okay. So this M or the constellation of Cassiopeia is the queen. So you can see the the 
the picture, the image uh, drawn here, the queen is looking at the mirror. That's why, that, that, that's the, the story, because it comes from the story, okay? Because this queen really loves her beauty. She really cares about her beauty. And this angered the god Poseidon because she said there's no other maiden that uh, that's, that's more beauty than her. She's the most beautiful of all. So she said that, like, like the queen of Snow White. It's not similar to Snow White. So she, she's like the queen of Snow White, okay? Uh, so that angered the Poseidon. So he has the, the uh, six other, uh, four other paragraph. Okay. So if you guys want me to tell you the story. Okay. Okay, I think you can, uh, okay, guys, you can look at this. All right. So this is one of the folklore from the Greek. So do we have a folklore in Malaysia? Yeah, we do. Uh, no, that's of Orion IG. No, that, that's uh, Kasabaya. Orion, I will tell you the Orion. So this is Orion. This is Orion, okay? The Orion, Orion that you know, okay, the Orion that, Orion that you know from the Greek myth is a hunter, okay? But for us in Malaysia, we call this one ethnic in Malaysia called Malaysian Dusun Sosogon. Okay, Dusun Sosogon call this as Balatik. Balatik is a hunter's trap. Because, uh, so you see, this, this folklore, right, is, uh, it always depends, the stories always depends on the local. So what the locals do, okay? So like this, uh, Dusun Sonsogon, they are hunter-gatherer. So they hunter, hunt, hunt for food, okay? And they gather. So they, they hunt for food. So how they hunt, they use this, Hunt, hunt trap. So they have they build a hunt trap, and then, uh, so that trap will kill probably pig or a rabbit or deer. So what's whatever inside the 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 uh forest. Okay, so you can see inside the the image here. You can see boar, wild boar. Yeah, wild boar. Uh, in Sabah we have wild boar. People call it. Uh, wild boar. They do eat wild boar, but for Islam, we don't eat uh, So we have like uh, cows, uh, so they have all that. So they do have like um, uh, hunting dogs, okay? So this hunt, the, the, the Dusun Sonsogon, they use, they look at, when they look at Orion, then they don't see the hunter, but they see that as the hunter's trap, okay? So so it is like the, the middle part here they call is is the part where it's like a sword, but they use from um gulo. Gulo is rotan, eh, no, gulo is bamboo bamboo. Okay. So they 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 shape it, shape the, the bamboo into it looks like a sword so that when anything that comes in your wild boar or deer comes into the trap, it kills the deer. Okay. So that's in, in Malaysia, but but in Malaysia we do a lot. We do have a lot of uh, a lot of ethnics, ethnicity, and we do a lot. We do have a lot of story from a different different uh, ethnicity. So Arinda say in Philippines is Balantic. Yeah, it for Malaysians Malay we call Balantic. So we have this like similar pronunciation Balantic, Balantic, Balantic. Yeah, so we. Like uh, most of astronation, we have the same linguistic, not linguistic, but we almost have the same, the same pronunciation. So, yeah, the words goes around. Like Malaysia and Philippines are very, very near. It, especially Sabah and Philippines, we are like neighbors, right? So next is we use the ancient people use it as a direction, like uh, like sailors and. Most of sailors are using and also fishermen. Okay, I do. I did ask uh, when I was in Indonesia, uh, in Palembang. Uh, there's a, a small island in front of Palembang. Uh, they still use stars as direct how to see the direction. Uh, interestingly, not only ancient people use stars uh, to look at the direction, but also people nowadays, uh, for example, in navy, they still use stars to locate themselves. Okay, to know that where they are, to know, to calculate their latitude and their longitude. Okay, so 
they use this the sextants to calculate uh, the angle of the stars, uh, the latitude, the, the altitude of the stars. So they use that and calculate how to calculate the latitude, the uh, longitude and latitude of the where they are. Okay, so I will tell you a little bit. Okay, uh, I will give you a demo on how do we use uh, how do we use the stars uh, to for direction. Okay. So this is a software called Stellarium. Okay. So this software is a simulation to uh, of our sky. So we can see a lot of night sky here. So this is tonight. Is it tonight? I don't think it's tonight. No. Um, okay, I'll put it tonight. Okay, this is tonight. So the ancient people will use mostly use uh, for the people from at the northern latitude. They will use, of course, we call it Polaris. It is called Stellarium. S T E L A R I U M Stellarium. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shaira. Thank you, our organizer. So, uh, for the northern people, they use north, north, northern sky. So they have one advantage, which is the north star. Okay. So this north star we locate here. Yeah, it's three. I need to okay here. Okay, so this is a this is a north star or Polaris. We call Polaris. Okay, uh, so this Polaris is used for maybe to see where's the north. Okay, so how do you know if that's north? So they usually they will wait or they they know their constellation already or they will wait. Okay, for, for a few hours or a few, uh, really more than one hour because this North Star doesn't really rotate as the other, other stars. Uh, like our, our, you know, our sky, our sky will rotate. Okay, so if I put back our landscape, so you know, our sky will rotate. So I'll put here first. Okay, so you can see that the sky move. All the stars move, but does our north star move? So we look here. Our north star doesn't really move. Okay, so you can see that. So you know that's the north. Okay, so you know that's the north. You know behind you is the south. So your right will be east, and your left will be west. Okay, so this is using star. But how do we use for the? What if there's no? There's no Polaris, right? If, if it's, uh, yeah, we can do other things, right? Okay, we can use other things. So we can use another constellation. Okay. So, the same constellation as now, Orion. Orion, Orion is Balante, Bal Balate, or Balate. So Orion can show our direction too, okay? And the best thing it can show the north, south, east, and west. So for the Equatorial people, we can use this. For Philippines or Malaysia, we, we can use this because it's near the equator. And you can see here that you can see there's four stars, Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, Rigel, and Saif. And in the middle, there's, there's three stars, Anilam, Anita, Mintaka. Oh, sorry, Anita, Anila, Mintaka, okay? So these three, there's four stars here. The, you can see uh, the direction here, but we, you can, we, know, we must know this one first, okay, to, to use this out, outside. So we must know that Betelgeuse and Bellatrix towards up, towards up is north. Saif and Rajal towards down is south. Then you know your east and west. Okay? 
or you can use the southern southern star southern constellation so for the southern people they always use the southern crux okay or the cross the crux so crux here will show you the direction so you have this crux okay one two three four it looks like a cross and from G crux to A crux towards down towards bottom that's the south okay and or you can use the Rigil and Hadar you split them towards the earth and that's south okay so yeah so so that's how you that's how people use the celestial to look to to determine where is the direction All right. So next, how do they, 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 the Asian people also can tell times? Uh, but now, not only Asian people can do to tell time. You also can tell time, but you, you can search for the star clock. Yeah, you can go to this website, sky and telescope dot org, and observing make a star clock. Okay, so star clock you can determine what time is that. Uh, in that particular time, okay. So by using, by uh, comparing the constellation above, but but this is only for northern people, okay. Or you can use the the sky, okay, the movement of the stars. So how many uh angle, how many degrees does ha has the sky move? So you know how long has it been, okay. And also you can know the season. So, so like you know, if it's Orion up there, uh, for the people uh in the northern uh Earth, so you know that's the winter. So if you can see the Scorpius, you know that that's the summer. So, so that's yeah. So that's also how the age people use. So they use the constellation to tell the season. So next, the crops. Uh yeah. So they use the celestial. Uh, to grow plants. So we did have interview with people, the local people. Do they you still use the of uh, the the celestial? They said they sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Okay. So like in Malaysia, uh, some local Malaysians in Sabah, the uh, they use this. This is this is the Pleiades, or in Japanese we call Subaru. In Malaysia we call Jula Juli Pitang Tujo. Uh, so in Malaysia, in Sabah, some of the ethnic here do do so, and some people still use this for to grow crops. Okay, so uh, they will see this if it's uh if it's uh, they see this uh object star cluster yeah seven sisters so they use if they if this star cluster uh, uh rise during the sundown after sundown okay after sunset you can see this above the sky it means above head it means that you can grow crop tomorrow so that morning you can grow crop yeah okay you can you can uh grow wheat or paddy so in Malaysia we use rice uh, so they can grow rice then uh if we don't if they don't see this they they really can't uh grow crop because you know that's not season for for in Malaysia right when you see this it means it's rainy season yeah uh, rainy and a bit uh, rainy and they have rain every day not every day lah, but it's a rainy season so so they can grow crop so it can have water yeah. okay all right uh so the aboriginal people we use the obvious object in the sky like the moon or star cluster. For example, also like the moon, uh, people will use the face of the moon. So some some of the farmers will look at the face of the moon whether they have they can grow corns or not. Yeah, so they will see the moon tonight. If there's moon, like half moon or full moon or there's no moon, it depends. Yeah, so they it determines whether they will or will not grow corn tomorrow okay 
So that's how the Aboriginal people use, the Asian people use this. Okay, so that's the uses of the dark sky, where, the, where you have dark skies at your place, uh, where the ancient people has the dark sky at their place, and the, the sailors, the farmers. Uh, and why does the people now do not use dark sky anymore? Okay, it's because of this. Okay. Oh yeah, before that, I would like to ask you guys. Uh, Abang, please uh, take, uh, take one, take the third poll, please. I do have a question for you guys before I go into another topic, okay? So, can you answer this? Have you seen a dark sky before? In your whole life, have you seen a dark sky before? So, I want to see how, how many of you have seen dark skies before. Looks like a lot of people have seen dark skies. What is considered as dark sky? The sky that you look now, so you see the dark sky means there's no light pollution. There's no light, artificial light around you. You can see a lot of skies right now. Like the one that you're looking at now, the screen now, that is a dark sky in Sabah, in Malaysia. Okay? So because that you can see a lot of sky, a lot of stars. So there's no artificial light. No artificial light. Oh, great. Good. We have uh, 28 people. We have 28 people here. Uh, voted for... Yes, you have seen Dark Sky. And 12 people have not seen Dark Sky before. Great. Good, good. That means you guys... Most of you guys have seen Dark Sky. And why don't we see this sky in the city? Okay. Because of this, of light pollution. Okay, so we have seen a lot of pollution, like water pollution, air pollution, noise pollution, and soil pollution. But what is light pollution? And I have want to ask, ask again, have you guys heard of light pollution? Aban, can you come up with the second, second poll? Okay, have you guys heard of light pollution before? Oh, great. Okay, so 26 of you have heard of light pollution before and 13 of you have not heard of light pollution. So, yeah, I still will go into light pollution and the effect of light pollution. So, I think most of you guys know where this is. Okay. So, light pollution is the... Why is light pollution? Light pollution is the inappropriate of excessive use of artificial light at night. Okay. So, most of it... Most of the light pollution comes from excessive lights. Okay. So, the excessive lights like the parks... You know, sometimes people like to decorate, okay? Can you guys answer in the comment? Do you guys know where this is? I think most of the Bangladesh people know where this is because I... No, it's where, is this in Dhaka? This is Dhaka. Yep, in Dhaka. Okay, guys, this is in Dhaka. So you have lights, you can see lights here shooting up at above. And you have lights here, really beautiful for you, but unfortunately, it has very high impact towards humans, wildlife, and our planet. Okay? Yeah, you went there, right? <laughs> okay. So yeah, so it's excessive. Yeah. Yep, it's Dhaka. So. We have a few components in like like uh, pollution. So the first one is the glare. So Mirpur, is it? Is it Mirpur? Yeah, dark in colors. It's bad colors. Okay. <laughs> okay. So glare is one of the light pollution that we can see everywhere if you go outside. 
okay like the glare from the lights uh the the light street lights from the cars and also from the the board you know like the board led board that you use in the in the city so that all are glare okay that's all glare so they are glare, they are very discomforting and it goes straight directly to towards our eyes so if the lights are glaring so that is like pollution it's not good okay and second one is sky glow sky glow you can see um you can see if you're in the city you can you look up you look up you can see it's a bit orangey or yellow or white but it's always orangey because of the the lights uh from the ground the streetlights are using yellow color or orange color so that's why your your sky is orangey okay so that is sky glow okay and the one another one is light trespass so light trespass means like this is the for example like this is here is a, a street light and this is your house and you can see the light the street light comes into your room so that is like trespassing okay so most of the people doesn't doesn't really care it doesn't mind that the light comes in but it doesn't all right, uh, so that's light trespassing actually. Some of the country that has a policy that if any lights that light from, if you cannot trespass light, you cannot, uh, your lights can trespass your border. Means your light must be inside your your compound, not other people, not your neighbor's house or compound, okay? You can get sued. Some, some of the country does has that policy, but in Malaysia, we don't have that policy yet i hope so okay uh so next is clutter clutter is bright light that is confusing and you know uh is like uh for example if you go out and you see got there's lights gather at one place but but it, the objective of the lights there you know is 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 overused okay it's very very confusing and some lights are you know somewhere it's not supposed to be lighted out Okay. All right. For example, in in Malaysia, so we have this. We are take. We took this photo around ten kilometer from the city. Yeah. So this is a, this is the city, our city in uh, Sabah in KK. Okay, Kota Kinabalu. So these are the the, the lights spread out. Okay, it, it just like you know bounce up. So you can see the lights here are a bit orangey. So we call it a light dome. So you can see. You see, you still can see a lot of stars, but the light here, if it spreads more, the place, it, the, 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 the territory of the light pollution spreads out, means more more dark sky will be less. Ah, so less dark sky places will be here, okay? So this is like real, real man. Uh, this is not from Google, it's like real, real image. So this is like also uh, light pollution. Where you can see glare. So this, this is, for example, glare in real life. So most of the people like to use a round street light or round, round lamp light outside their house, or because they say you they want to light up the compound and also their house. So, but it it doesn't you know uh complete the objective where you can you only light the bottom. This light also towards the sky or also towards people that looking at it okay this is glare and this is like trespassing so uh, some neighbors yeah who who for me for me i do get annoyed if my neighbor put up a spotlight and it's not facing me this is a like trespassing and it doesn't you know it's like why you put in my room because your compound doesn't cover everything right so this is like trespassing okay so bad thing the effect what are the effect of light pollution other than you cannot see stars okay the impact is that the human wildlife ecosystem okay towards human and wildlife and ecosystem okay okay i got 
Question for her is, does the orange sky exist due to reflection of light on the cloud or does the light actually cause in fact the sky to turn orange cloud color? Uh, okay, so it's the reflection uh, reflection from the, the street light that we are using. So mostly in Malaysia, we have we have we are using the orange color warm color street light that has glare and it has a very high intensity so it rebounds bounce off the earth and it towards the clouds okay so that's the color of the of the street lights and also the buildings so, so most of the buildings are using uh but they are various, uh, various, various uh, colors. So it depends. So if you're in like Kuala Lumpur, you can see the color, the lights from uh, like KLCC building. Or if you go to like New York, you can see New York building. So they like to put up spotlight, white color spotlight. So that will will make white color clouds. So you can see the clouds is light, lit up. Okay. Just like pollution affect the sky also. So it will it will affect not the day sky but it will affect the people who are looking at it like I'm look um, I'm I'm explaining right now towards human towards wildlife and towards ecosystem okay so we are affected by light pollution if you're in very high light high pollution high light pollution so uh you get sleep deprived okay I not only sleep deprived, you got more than that. So what happened is when you are when you are exposed to towards these uh, lights, like we are using right now, your your lights at home, you're using the white light. Uh, if you're in office, you're using white light. If you're in your uh, in hospital, using white light. At the street, uh, and also if you're like for example, you're in Singapore, right? Singapore is very light polluted. So surround you is uh, light polluted using white light. There's a lot of blue light. So why I call it white light? It has blue wavelength. Okay, that blue wavelength will affect our brain. So what happened is that blue wavelength will enter our eyes, and our eyes will uh, our it will impact on the secreting of uh, melatonin. Okay. So that melatonin hormone is a hormone called melatonin. So this melatonin hormone, it will impact. It is is the is the melatonin is like it's a clock. You know, it's, it trigger it trigger our body to say it's night time. Okay, so we, our body, we, our body, we has we have biological clock. Okay, we know when to sleep. We know when to eat. We know when to drink. We know when to you know to have a medicine. So we know all this because our hormone, hormone tell us to to sleep or to eat or you know. So this melatonin is for our to sleep, okay. So it's our biological clock. So yeah, so 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 the blue wavelength is is the one that impact the most in our circadian system, the circadian system. So it impact our sleep. So I mean, you don't, uh, when you have a lot of lights, you can't sleep at night. You're gonna get uh, fatigue. So your body temperature will high, uh, will rise, will increase. Then then your blood pressure will increase. Then you get you take your medicine. Then yeah, your secretion your secretion of hormones will go haywire. And yeah, so it goes on. You know, then you get cancer. Uh, so that's why for people that who cares about beauty. That's why they say if you care about your health and your beauty, they say you must sleep at night. You must get a lot of uh, rest because yeah, because when you uh, when you get a lot of rest, you don't have those those things like fatigue and all. Okay, that's why you are not you are to be told to get a lot of rest. But to get rest, you you are with all the lights. It's very hard for you to sleep. So you and also with your phone, our phone also have very high blue light. Okay, so some phone they have this uh reading mode. Or you can change the the warmth of the uh, phone. That's uh yeah okay. So that's impact. So like yeah like I said just now like in Singapore, 
you can't really you Singapore is very bright. So since young, since young, if you're if you're you're born in Singapore, so since young until you, uh, until your age right now, you are always adapt. You are always surrounded with light pollution. So imagine sleeping at night with light pollution. In Singapore, has been found that the most polluted country. Oh yes, and they are their eyes cannot fully adapt to night vision. Okay, so yeah, it affects it affects your for people that live in these countries. Yeah, so it affects their night vision. Okay, next to us the wildlife. So I would like. Especially this turtle. Okay, I will let's video uh, show you what happened to this turtle. 80% of all hatchlings on this beach are now disorientated by the lights of the town. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Roads bring many to their end. So eighty percent of all. So you see. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, someone asked. Okay, someone say I don't think so because those light can beat the light of our side. Yeah, okay. During daytime, so you know that daytime is for you to have activities. That's where it suppress our melatonin. Okay. But nighttime is where you have to sleep. So you need to have melatonin to have for you to sleep. So daytime you need to have a lot of lights so that you don't get sleepy. So you mean that like you have to be you not know, you have to get healthy, to be healthy, you need to have for 12 hours, you need to have a lot of lights. Okay? That's why you have daytime. For at night, if you don't have if you have still have the daytime light, you are still suppressing melatonin. So that that's why you cannot, that's why you cannot uh you cannot sleep. Okay. So why you do you have 24 hours of daytime? Okay, that's why you have day, daytime and nighttime. 12 hours daytime, 12 hours nighttime. Okay, does that hour help us to wash a dark sky even urban area? If you, there's one, there's one event happened where in Hong Kong, where uh, they have uh, they have the authorities to to turn off the power, the whole city, and they can see the Milky Way. That is the best Earth hour ever. If you can do that, if you just turn off inside. The light that the sky inside the building, it doesn't change. Okay, do you need to have the whole, the whole city, the whole city, not just the inside our, uh, our, um, room or our building. So we need to have the street lights and all, all the you know billboards, LED billboards, and all the traffic lights. You know, we need we need that all that to, to turn off to have to see the dark sky. All right. Okay. So what have, what what you saw just now is a video of baby turtles going towards the city. They are not going towards the ocean. Why is that happen? Why does that happen? Because during at night, if the turtles hatch, they how do they know if there's water, ocean, or they are what they are going towards the 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 beach. So it. They use the glimmers, okay, the glimmers uh, on the surface of the ocean. The lights from the sky, like the moon of the stars, bounce. It will reflect on the surface of the of the uh, ocean, so it glimmers. So that's how they know if it's like you know if that 
part of the ocean lights up, then they know that's the water. The water reflects, okay? So what if you have you have the beach also lighted up, you have this, the, the, the ocean also lighted up. So what happened is they are confused. So they say, okay, this 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 all these lighted lighted up place are ocean. So they go whenever there's light. Okay, so they go towards the light. So you choose where they go. We human choose where they go. Okay. So if you light up the beach, they go that way. You know the ocean. Of course, they go that way. And if you, how do we let the turtle choose? Is by turning off the lights. Okay, by turning off the light. So you can, they know where the water glimmers. So they go towards the ocean. So, you know, fish lighting is, is a killer. Yeah. And also, you know, the, the, it, it starts with us. Okay. It starts from us. Yeah. So we can change, you know, we can change. So this is the sky that I'm showing you here is from Sabah in, in Beaufort. So if you want to see this sky, you really need to change. Okay. It starts from us. Start from us. So, you know, light trespassing is not fair, okay? It's not fair to, to your neighbor and it's not fair for you if you have neighbor that has light trespassing your, your place, okay? So, it's not fair. So, what do we do? We change, okay? We need to change. So, first thing we need to, we need to see if that lighting is useful for us, okay? If that lighting is useful for us, for example, for the first, uh, the, the image on the left is lighting that's not useful. It means that it has, it has a lot of lights, you know, bumming here and there, not knowing where it's going. I mean, like, okay, why do we have lights going above there? Why, why do you want to shine, right? Where do you want to shine? <laughs> the birds are not using that. No, the, the most are not using that. Who who's using the light up, up here? Okay. And also here, where do you where do you want you know what was it for? You you're gonna have the land the the land lights in you know the compound lights and you're gonna have this light also. So if you want to shine the lights towards the door, so shine there, right? And it must be targeted, okay? So you we always we always go to the store and we always always see there's a bulb, okay, and we always use the bulb without the hood because it's easy and it's cheaper, but it's very it is very bad because it, it's gonna give light like, pollution. It's gonna give impact to people who's walking there. For example, if, for example, if you put that bulb or you put that spotlight in front of your door. People who are going to your towards your towards your house, if you're going home, you're gonna see this light, it's gonna give you glare. So you get blinded for a while. So you you you, you will look down, right? So the light that you're using is looking down. So you're not look, looking towards the sky. So you look here, the light that shining up to the sky is not used. Okay? So you must have we must put our lights. Targeted, okay? You know the objective. You must know the objective. Okay? So, then we must use the low, we must use low light. I mean, we must use intensity of uh, less, the minimum intensity, okay? So, if that's the minimum, as long as it's, it's usable, you know? It's useful. It's not, uh, as long as it's, it's not, you know, over, okay? So, Someone asked if can can human live without artificial light? Okay, that's why I'm I'm talking about like we can change. I don't say that we should off turn off our lights. We should use good lighting, okay? Smart lighting or smart dark sky lighting. Okay, so these are the five principles that we we set. First is useful, second is targeted. So third one is light, low light control. So it's low light, it's not very high intensity. And the fourth one, yeah, dimmer. Dim light is the best. Yes, you dim your light. So it's not that bright. So the intensity of the light. So when you buy, when we buy to the store, right, they they do have the watt, 
how many watt do you want like nine to ten to twelve watts so it that 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 will show you the intensity that you're going to use okay the watt next is control okay uh at night if you have the compound uh, or garage lights is the best if you have it uh whether it's in on timer or whether it's on movement uh detector okay so if that's if it's uh with the timer you you're gonna have like okay limit until 10 o'clock or maybe until 12 because after 12 there's no one right no one gonna go to the garage all right so you have it on a timer or you have it on a movement control which is better uh when whenever there's uh movement inside that range the light we light up okay yeah sensor yes juliana yes sensor so you have the movement sensor so anyone or anything if a thief coming yeah so you know this if it's lit up you know there's someone there right or if there's you know elephant or bear we have elephant in Sabah. <laughs> so we have yeah white elephant sometimes comes yeah so we have movement control uh lights so that's the best okay so that's the fourth one the fifth one is color okay so the color uh is the best that we use warm color like we like i uh explained just now why bright the why blue color or white color is not good because it impact our our eyes and impact our health and also it impacts on uh the small insects okay like moth butterflies uh beetles so they are impact by by lights especially white light okay because it impact with the blue wavelength so do you usually do you do you uh notice that sometimes before rain or after rain you can see a lot of moth like surrounding your lights uh, that's why because the the insects are attracted to the that wavelength okay Sensor light is very costly at this time. That's why it's not available. Uh, maybe, uh, probably, it's, yeah, probably it depends on the country. Uh, some country that has a very cheap uh, sensor. Sometimes you can even make a DIY where you can use an infrared, uh, uh, infrared detector or you can use, you have that, you can use Raspberry Pi, you can use Arduino, uh, then you can uh, connect it to the light. Yeah. So you can, yeah, you can use the solar one. Yes, the solar one also can. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't use candles. <laughs> it's not really relevant. Uh, every in your house, but not really relevant for outside. Okay. So when you say when you go to the store, uh, when we go to the store, uh, we can see this. Uh, you you check to the box. You check in the box. Uh, on the box, right? You have the watt, uh, that means the, the intensity, and the one is the K. K is the K is a warm. Okay, warm means that if it's low number, one thousand, it has warm light. Okay, if it's a higher number, ten thousand. Mostly we have warm, uh, white light, white light, daytime light. So that is six to seven thousand daytime light. So if it's higher, that means it's blue light. Okay, so so we recommend 2700k and below all right 2700k is warm light and below so it's around here so most of the if you can see right most of the resorts or uh, hotel uh, five star hotel they love to use 2000 2700 to 3000 or lesser because uh for them it looks more ambient the the surrounding it looks more inviting and very warm okay so so yeah so let's change okay even if it takes time i know like for us in kk for kota kinabalu right that we have this awareness for already like for four years and we have this uh awareness going around sabah for more than five years and we've been we've been telling people that we can see dark sky but we didn't tell how can we change the light so yeah we had to change now even even if it takes 10 10 years 20 years we, we have to start so 
go to your city council, to your mayor, and tell them, you know, we always have this kind of light. Why not? We have like, uh, we need to change the lights, you know, instead of using the lights that we are using right now, we have it hooded, okay, fully shielded, okay, fully shielded. So all the lights are going towards the ground, not towards the sky. So we protect the sky, that's one. So like in the buildings, you know, high, high rise buildings, uh, buildings like iconic buildings, they like to put spotlights. We have to tell them, we have like, have the collaboration with them, you know, tell them that we is not really, you know, uh, inviting if you put that way, okay? You need to put uh, 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 smart lighting, all right? So first we can have like fully shielded. All the best is we have minimal number, okay? Minimum number of lights. So we only light where that part needs to be lighted up. Like the the pathway of people will go in out, or the street light where the cars are coming out, the, the junctions. Uh, so I mean like all other places that needed really really need the light. So like, like the junctions, right? Junctions need light. So we don't say that we don't need that. Then we need that. But yeah, we use smart lighting. Okay, and the best thing is turn it off when it is not used. So like the sensor, okay, like timer. So we need, really need to fix our light. So let's fix our light. So what kind of light that we need to use? So we, I do have graph here. Graphic on the left side is unacceptable or discouraged to use. So most of the lights here on the left, you can see, you can see the light bulb. And the one on the right, is acceptable. That means it's the light. You can see all the light bulbs are not visible with our eyes. Okay. So does this? Uh, is there any in the world that use good lighting? Any city in the world that use that use uh, good lighting? Yes, there is. Okay, there is in Arizona called Tucson. Tucson has uh, in two thousand sixteen. Daryl Cole, Director of Transportation for the City of Tucson, he consulted with IDA member of Crystal Monroe. Okay, so he's in, he is an engineer, a global energy energy and management firm. So he developed a plan to convert nearly 20,000 streetlights from a high pressure sodium to energy efficient LED with additive control. Okay, so the plan projected a saving of $180,000 per month in energy consumption and a 60% of reduction in lumen output from street lighting. So it has been adapted, okay? That's a city has been using it. So we can use the model in Tucson, Arizona. So you can see here in Tucson, you can see the only the part lighted up is in the street and the junctions and they use warm light, all right? And and also they use, uh, they have timer for this. Uh, at this time at night, they only light it up until 9 p.m. Uh, sorry, until 12 p.m. Above 12, they close it until 7 a.m. Uh, so 12 a.m. to 7 a.m. it close and 7 a.m. they start to uh, on turn, turn off. Sorry, yeah, turn off, uh, sorry. 12 o'clock they start to off at 70%, uh, okay? 70% of the lights, they dim it at 70% and then they turn it off at 7, at 7, okay? So here are the lights. Okay. I have a question, there wasn't the picture of tube lights. Are tube lights acceptable? You see tube lights are the bulb. Panel floor, you mean, right? The panel floor. Panel floor are tube bulbs. They are not, they are not acceptable if you put outside, okay? Because it, it, the range of the the light the lights is you know is everywhere. It's same like like bulb. We have to explain to government. Yes, that's why that's why that's the reason. This is the reason why I open up Taxka in Malaysia. So that Malaysia can come up with the same thing. We can use the same model as in Arizona to be to be uh implement in Malaysia. I ha I have high hopes for, for Kota Kinabalu. So I so we are approaching to for Kota Kinabalu. So before I end, I have two videos. 
we have two videos that uh, I would like you guys to see. One is that uh, it represents to all of, all of the mostly amateur astronomers, astronomers and all the dark sky advocates. I want, we want, we, it is like representing us, okay? The second video I would like to show is that the dark sky that we can see. Uh, we have classes of dark sky, okay? So, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed.
So thank you guys. Uh, so thank you guys for having me. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, with all the questions, I hope is there any question I'll try to uh, answer. So yeah. So uh, the first video, yeah. So I hope because I, I saw everyone, everyone like uh, response to to the first video. Uh, yes, you can get it in the. Uh, Vimeo, V I M E O. Also in YouTube, you just search for Borrowed Light. So, from Zarifa, uh, all humans of Bangladesh use tube lights in different ways to decorate their house. Okay, so I know that these are harmful, but they are doing this non stop to make their home luxurious. What do you think? Uh, why do you think, how do we leave the message? So, for me, yeah, we, we, what we can do is we can start from our house. You no, know, show them that our house, we can make it luxurious by not using that. You know, we can do it by using like the one that I told you. You can see the results, like right? you go to any, you know, big resort, they use very, they use warm light and it, it all shines to downwards. But, but now also most of the results are using white light. But I'm not very sure. But yeah, you can use warm light. Warm light make it very ambient. Uh, you can yeah, you can start with your house first. Show the neighbors that you can uh, you can uh, still decorate your house by not, by not using that, and and tell the tell your neighbor beside your house. Yeah, you, you we all you, what you can do is. Um, you can do a stargazing session with them and tell them that you know you can see stars at our house. But if you are using this light, it quite disturb our eyes. But why not we change our lights? You know, like ask them to stargaze. You know, uh, instead of uh, yeah, we, we can't just bombard their house and say hey, you need to change your light, right? So yeah, yeah. So you can like um, uh, probably have a stargazing session, ask them to see the stars, you know, probably a meteor shower if there's, yeah, coming, this coming August, on the 12th of August, we have perceived meteor shower, it's the best time for, to advocate about uh, dark sky and light pollution, where we can do uh, a stargazing moment, so we can tell people that, you know, we can, we can see the stars, and we can see meteor shower, you can see meteors, we have naked eyes, so we need to turn off our lights so they can see the beautiful sky at night. Then say, oh yeah, we should do this more often. Probably change our light instead of turn off our lights, right? I hope that helps. <laughs> City of Light has normally become everyone's dream. A nightmare for astro lovers. Awareness on light pollution is very low. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can come up with PSA videos to educate the public. Yeah, that's why right. so, uh, the video, the second video that you saw is from Srira Murali. He's not actually, he's not an astronomer, but he's a dark sky, a dark sky advocate. So he said, he told, he, he did uh, tell us that, tell us that he is from India and he has been around in US uh, and also Canada, if I'm not mistaken. So he can see a lot of night sky in the national park. So they have do they do have dark sky park there. So they say when they, when he go back to his country, he go back to his home in India, where there's a lot very, the, the, the light pollution the light pollution there is you know is immeasurable. It's really light polluted. So when they go back when he go back there to tell about to tell about the dark sky to, towards his uh to his mom and dad and his siblings and his auntie and uncle, they all, no, they all can't imagine what is a dark sky. They can't imagine because 80, almost 80% 80 of the world, they did not, they have not seen dark sky before. So it's not that they are not aware, it's that they are not exposed to dark sky. You know, look there, look up, you know. So what he did is he went around again and took uh, a time lapse of that place to make a video so that he can educate, to show them and educate them uh, about, you know, this is the sky uh, and uh, the dark sky. And 
actually dark sky is class you know class, uh, uh, it has classes from bottle one to bottle nine for example like if you go to like uh, Kuala Lumpur our capital, capital city is bottle eight uh, KK this is bottle six or seven okay so so this kind of sky a uh, bottle six seven eight nine is that is the worst, okay? One, bottle one is the best. It's pristine dark sky. So to show them, to show to show them dark sky, that's how we do. So yeah, uh, I believe that a lot of us, I think you guys are, are all dark sky advocates. So what we can do is we have to make it localized. Um, like what Sriya Morali did, he generalized the, 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 the video, okay? But he, he does have he does have another uh, light pollution uh, video though. You can search in his YouTube. Go to his channel, Sura Murali. It is called this this video that I I show you just now. It is called Lost in Light. Another one it is called Saving the Dark. Okay, go to his uh, channel. It is called Saving the Dark. So he has one hour of uh, explaining what is dark sky or what is light pollution uh with the uh the ida members international dark sky association uh explaining about dark sky and light pollution um yeah he has one hour of that so you can go go to his uh, channel okay all right yes we have to start start from us it's always start from us like we like like for example like plastic pollution or or air pollution always start from us like air pollution we need to like um, using the uh, instead of using plastic, we have to we use something else. Like you know, we bring our own bag to the market, you know, uh, to to you know not to use plastic. So for example, like that. Uh, please repeat the channel's name. Sriya Murali. I think that's Malaysia already put in. Yeah, uh, there. That's Malaysia. Uh, Sriya Murali. Okay. So that he has made two uh videos uh movies and it's a what what we need movies uh, uh, amazing people so yeah so from next nation also we are trying to make one movie for malaysians which is in malay and also using uh, footage from malaysia so i hope you guys also from philippines or wherever you are from bangladesh use your own sky to advocate your your people okay if you don't have dark sky at your place, do ask people that who has dark sky places. Okay, like Sri Mali or us, Dark Sky Malaysia. We have Dark Sky Thailand. We have a lot. You or you can contact IDA. Okay, International Dark Sky Association. All right. I think that's all for me. We I think we have exceed one hour. Uh, thank you guys again. Thank you for uh, for having you no know, towards throughout one hour. Thank you so much. I uh, hope to see you guys for the next uh, class. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to have one class tomorrow uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, in Malaysia time, 1 p.m. in Bangladesh time. Uh, it will be about astro, is it astrobiology or astrophysics. Uh, how to get into astrophysics um, with yeah. a lecturer from uh, Bangladesh. Uh, uh, he will talk about uh, how to get um, yourself into astrophysics, basically. And I hope to see um, you guys tomorrow during the class. It'll be very interesting. So um, can I have um, everyone to open, uh, to on their camera uh, to take picture for the class for the session tonight? Oh, before we end, okay. Before we end, we have can we like take picture first? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. On your camera. Ah, love to see you guys. Oh my god. Yeah, so happy to see all of you. This is, this I'm Malaysian. Nice. I'm Malaysian. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I I would like to say all the names. Uh, Juliana is from Philippines, right? Hi. No, Juliana, she's from Sabah. She's from Sabah. She's my friend. What? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Juliana. And Constance. Hi, Constance. We have uh, Anita. We have Harris. We have Maripa. Okay, okay, so 
All right, thank you very much, everyone. I will take uh, three uh, snacks because I have to go to the next page, okay? All right, so I hope everyone already on their camera, okay? All right, everyone just ready. When I say one, two, three, just pose, okay? All right, one, two, three. Okay, all right, another two. Okay, let me save this first. Okay, next. Well, um, okay, a lot of you haven't uh, on your camera yet. So I will take those two on their camera, okay? All right, one, two, three. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, we'll have one more. Okay, let me save that first. Okay, one more. One, two, three. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll post this picture uh, in uh, Dark Sky Malaysia and also uh, BSRS. Thank you very much for attending the so, class. And also, also, if you're Malaysians, do contact us, right? If you're Malaysians, do contact us. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys. Thank you, you guys so much. Tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, 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 -bye. You're still recording, bang. Uh -oh.